Hello beautiful, this is Aroma here and welcome back to Seduce Me 2 and we are now officially back with our love of love Damien. I'm gonna be quite sad actually when I'm playing another route and Damien's uh, wife is gonna be there. Gonna be quite sad. As Damien and I had our moment, his brother stepped up near us, almost in a protective circle. Sam, however, moved towards Diana, glaring hard. You've got ten seconds to explain why she's here, bitch. Uh, pfft, Sam, come on now. I'm going to ignore that insult for the sake of the bride. However, I wasn't the one who brought her here. You're such a terrible liar. No, no, she, she really didn't, guys. I turned to see Matthew and Sam standing in front of me with and Damien ready to attack ready to attack Diana. The succubus in question, however, seemed unfazed by their attempts in, at intimidation. Guys. Did she bring you here? What? I turned my head back to Damien. I saw a serious look in his eyes. I had only seen that look once before, when Diana had confronted me and showed me his past. I shook my head. No, she didn't bring me here. It was a demon lord. Can I beg your pardon? <laughs> James is so scared. Are you sure? I stared at Damien, seeing something in his eyes ignite like an angry flame that was quickly growing. His hold on me tightened as he looked at Diana. Why did he bring her here? I looked at, I looked over to D Diana, sorry, D all these D's names, man, um, knowing that she would explain, but I was surprised to see her flinch back at his expression. Was she scared? Shaking her head, Diana cleared her throat and looked back to Damien, settling back into her uncaring gaze. He wanted to lure you all back. Knowing that at least you, Damien, would chase after her, and the others would follow. Obviously, his plan worked. Well, they're pretty shocked about it. This time, <laughs> it was the boys who flinched in surprise, feeling the weight of, of, of her words. However, Damien gathered himself and spoke up again. Well, thank you for keeping her safe. We'll be... She can't leave. And why not? She's been cursed by the demon. She can't leave unless she dies or until we kill him. You plan to kill him? We're obviously not going to choose the former. We've been fighting the Demon Lord for ten years now. Might as well have another reason to kill him. Alright. My eyes look, lock, look, looked to Damien, wondering what he was thinking. Diana then shrugged. However, it will take some time to plan out our attack. We can't just walk into his castle and slit his throat. Damien finally looked back to me, staring into my eyes as if he was trying to find some sort of response. I stared back, trying to find some hint as to what he was thinking about in his eyes. He slowly leaned forward and kissed my forehead, before turning his head back to Diana. How much time do you need? One week. One week? I shot my head towards Diana in surprise, as did the, 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 the rest of the occupants. I was going to say the, as the result. The rest of the occupants in the room. Seriously? One week? Where is this number coming from, Succubus? We need to fully prepare ourselves for the final stage, which I'm certain will only take a couple of days. We've pinned him into a corner. The Demon Lord will fall. That's rather bold to assume. She's right, though. We can prepare everything in that time frame, right? When do we get to know all these names? And if he does the same and attacks us before then? He won't. I watched as Diana walked over and cleared the table of the materials they had gathered for the spell, the gate spell. Revealing a physical map of the abyssal plains, she pointed to a spot on the map. A peninsula surrounded by water labeled as the Decaying Sea. We'll cast a barrier spell along the edge of the peninsula and around the castle. He and his army won't be able to move from that spot until we break it ourselves, which will be during the siege. Where would we get the energy needed for that kind of spell? We won't be using energy. The other rebel demons in the room suddenly tensed up, staring at Diana in surprise. What was she going to do? My lady, you're not suggesting. The demon lord has shown how far he is willing to go to win this war. It's only fitting to show the extent we'll go to in response. What are we doing? As much as I agree with you, this seems a little rash. What are you guys talking about? Are they allowed to know? I plan to put a barrier curse around the Demon Lord's castle and army. It's temporary, so it won't need the blood of a thousand demons. But it will need the sacrifice of at least one demon life. Excuse me? And I assume you'll be sacrificing one of my soldiers. Is this our only option? There are other options, but they will most likely take a 
lot of energy to pull off. It just depends on what we want to do. If we want to do this immediately, then the barrier curse is indeed the best option. I'm not opposed to performing the curse. As rash as it is, it will make our lives easier in the long run. So... We will need to sacrifice a demon? And what demon are we sacrificing? You expect me to hand over one of my men? My soldiers joined the rebellion to kill the demon lord, not to get their throats slit before even seeing the final battle. It's wrong, but can we really afford to spend any more energy? Diana already spent a lot trying to send the human back. And she can only have so much to love. What is the other option? The rather woman of Barry move forward move towards the map and point at the peninsula. We could form tall rock walls around the castle. Box him in. Wanna be able to box out? It will take a lot of our energy. But we can recover in that week period. And what will stop the demon lord from tearing down the walls? I can imbue the walls with holy magic. The Incubi and I looked at him, all of us equally surprised. A demon with holy magic? How? How the fuck did you get holy magic? <laughs> you look and smell like a demon. The guard held up his wrapped hand, letting the beads around it jangle with a sudden motion. I've had the ability to use holy magic ever since I was taken in by my lady's family. There's no doubt that I am a demon, but I can't recall how I gained this ability. How is holy magic different than demon magic? It's white magic. Unlike demon magic, holy magic isn't so finicky. Think of it as warding or dispelling magic. You can't bless air or anything that doesn't have physical form, but you can bless objects to fight back against other forms of magic. Seems about right. If the walls were blessed with holy magic, the demon lord wouldn't be able to escape until we released him. Why not just trap him forever? Because that's not the point. Because I can't leave unless he dies. That's idiotic. He would still be a threat regardless. Holy magic doesn't last forever. And stone will crumble eventually. He's right. We wouldn't be able to keep the walls up forever. The situation became more and more complicated the more we discussed it. How were we going to go about this? We can't just sit around and debate this forever. The longer we wait, the more we risk him striking back at us. But is it worth killing someone to trap him? When we finally strike, we will lose hundreds if not thousands of soldiers anyway. What difference will it make to lose one more life on top of this? Mm. Soulless fuck. <laughs> We can still cage him in. I bit my lip. It was a really tough decision. A curse or a trap, which was better. Both had their prices, but we had to choose one. From the look of it, no one wanted to speak up, so I felt the urge to say something. Maybe I would be the one who would determine everything. But which method would be the best choice? Excuse me, I have to pick? The curse or the trap? The curse, I have to kill one soldier, right? One demon. And the trap, we're just putting a wall over him. Um. Uh, people are gonna think I'm soulless as fuck. <laughs> but, <laughs> this game's already making me cuss. Very unnecessary. Sorry for my potty mouth. But, honestly, I would say the curse. So then they would save up their energy. I mean, people are going to die anyway for the war. I mean, I, I sound totally terrible right now, but I say the curse. Because we're... Uh, they're risking their life anyway. They should know that they joined this guy's army. They should know the outcome. Everyone in the... Oh, an eye for an eye. God, achievement. Everyone in the room looked at me in surprise as I finally spoke up. The demon lord had trapped me here with the blood of a thousand demons. It was only fair to trap him with the life of just one. Will the curse work with just one life? Yes. He won't be able to escape. Because of its dark magic. Damien's totally not going to marry me now. Are you sure this is the best choice? I don't even know what ending I'm getting now at this point. A monster like him won't stop if we box him in. We have to ensure that he won't be... He won't be able to do anything while we prepare to fight back. 
Everyone nodded, most in reluctance, while the others did with confidence. Diana, however, turned to the orc man with a stern face. As for your reluctance, Sir Brute, we won't be using one of your men. Oh. Well then, who would you use? At that moment, Diana smirked, sending a familiar shiver down my spine. For a split second, I swore I saw a, a flash of gold cross her visible eyes. She replied to Matthew. A little mongrel who had the nerve to electrocute me in my own castle. I stared. There was really... There really was an imp in the castle? However, my mind released the question to focus on Diana's smirk. Something was off about Diana, and I couldn't put my finger on what it was. When I came to the demon world, I had barely recognized her and didn't expect her kindness. Now as I was staring at her at the moment, I again recognized the woman who had attacked me in the human world. Diana shook her head before casting her arms and looked directly at me. So, since you'll be here for a while, we might as well give you names that you can use to refer to everyone here. Yes, thank you. Oh, oh, are, we, are we getting human names? <laughs> Must we? Diana rolled her eyes and gestured to each demon, naming them on the fly. For the sake of time, we'll use simple names. This is Rabbit, our magic advisor, Sergeant, commander of our armies, Shadow, leader of our assassins, and Fay, our nomadic force ambassador. Sergeant, I'm a commander, succubus. Shouldn't my name be Commander? <laughs> it's easier on the tongue, though, to say Sergeant. My lady. What shall they call me? Diana looked at Serio. I'm guessing that's his name. For a moment before turning toward me, a look of seriousness and... Uh, that word. For her eyes. Will they call him Serio. Serio? He is my personal guard, and he is always by my side. The other demons in Serio seem to be surprised. Was Serio his, his true demon name? Why would she give, that, give me his true name? Are you sure? Call him only if your life depends on it. Do not abuse this permission. Well, how are we going to call him if we we're, we need toilet paper or something? <laughs> That's an emergency. <laughs> My life depends on it. Her eyes seemed to burn as she gazed into mine, full of hard intent and warning. I mentally noted her seriousness as she ran a hand through her hair. Oh, I don't need him, all right? We have Damien, so it's cool. Well, now that we have a plan and introductions are out of the way, I believe we can end this meeting. We have a lot to accomplish in one week. Why is Eric just standing there? What about us? You don't expect us to sit around. Oh. Actually, I do. You all don't belong on the battlefield. Excuse me? Just hold on a... I will not take untrained and unarmed beings into a war zone. And aren't you humans? Are these wives not human? Hold on. I interjected, stepping forward and crossing my arms at Diana. She seriously wasn't going to make us stay back? Wait, she seriously wasn't going to make us stay back while she fought the demon lord, was she? Um, is this really what we should do? We can fight too. That's not fair, Diana. We can fight too. Diana squinted at me. Well, not me, but you know them. <laughs> Pressing her lips together. Wait, yes, I can do. I can be a distraction. Pressing her lips together in a fine line. However, I meant what I said. We could fight too. You expect me to trust that you can fight in a war? I can be your decoy. Let me and my brothers train then. We're demons, for fuck's sake. We know how to fight. Well, besides Damien. Damien's a human. The boys stared at Diana as she turned her head towards Sam. He was right, though. They knew how to train so they could fight. And they fought with the, re with the rebellion. There would be a better chance of winning this war. You all realize this is a war, correct? You can die here. We understand completely. Uh. We know what the risks are. Diana could only stare at her group as we challenged her proclamation. Pro 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 proclamation? Man, I can't speak today. I wrapped my, arm, my hand around my fiance's arm, frightened at the idea of participating in the war. But knowing that we needed all the strength we could muster to finish off the Demon Lord, this was the only way that I could go home. <sighs> Defeated, Diana sighed and rubbed her temples. Very well. I can't exactly keep you here like prisoners, so it will be up to you if you choose to train for battle. However, I highly suggest just staying here and allowing us to handle it. But it's not going to happen. I nodded, as did the others. This was really happening. We were going to kill the Demon Lord, and we had one week to either prepare for war or wait it out. Diana turned towards me and looked down at my outfit. I had nearly forgotten that I was still in my wedding dress until Diana pointed at my chest. Lumen infere, bellum tabiscere, serene. 
I stared at her, unsure of why she was speaking in Latin, until I felt the fabric around my body shift and change. I quickly looked down and see my wedding dress morph into an outfit that looked perfect for the demon world. Which is, the white top shifted into a long sleeve oversized tunic with a leather corset and vest while the bottom part of my gown split and wrapped around my legs, forming two dark leggings. My shoes stretched into long knee-high boots. Hey, you look really nice. Good choice. <laughs> I blushed getting used to the feel of the outfit. The corset wasn't tight, but it was still something new along with the rest of the garb. Damien smiled and wrapped an arm around my shoulder, hugging me to him. You look really nice. Thanks, even though we're trying to be serious here. Thank you. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to head for the Demon Lord's castle. Do you plan to shadow travel? No, I have another method. Don't worry, I'll be back by morning. Uh, are you gonna ride a horse or something? Diana looked at Faye and nodded to them as they pressed their lips together in a tight Faye, line. Please escort our guests to the remaining open rooms while I'm gone. All right. Set up. Yes, my lady. All right. Okay. Sarah walked toward Diana and followed her out of the room. The other demons, however, looked towards us. I'll take you to your rooms then. Thank you. We truly appreciate it. Thanks, Faye. The moment for a moment wandered to Diana, I remember her almost evil smirk when we decided to perform the curse. What was she planning to do? Hopefully nothing truly sadistic. Though I walked to the room was filled with awkward silence. That what 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 were what were we supposed to do here? Damien and I were both human and while yes, we both knew he'd have to help in the war, he wasn't a demon anymore. I grimaced, feeling the nervousness of the situation take hold of me. This was going to be a rocky adventure. Who knew what would happen? What to expect? I could only guess time would tell. I gripped Damien's hand harder, letting my nerves sink in. Naturally, Damien smiled and kissed my forehead. It's okay. Everything will be alright, I promise. I nodded, but some part of me was still feels was still fearful despite his reassurance. We're in the demon world. Humans in the demon world. I was worried what would become of Damien now that he was in, ho in was in his home plane as something that he wasn't born as. I looked up at Damien, seeing him focus on following our guide to get us to our room. I was curious what was going through his mind. I was sure he was worried when when, when was when I was taken, but now that he had me back, what was he thinking of now? For a moment, I briefly wish I had his mind reading ability. I wanted to know what he went through. I, I wanted to know what went through Damien's mind at everything we did, at every step we made, at every event that came along the road. Feeling my stare, Damien turned his head and looked down at me, furrowing his eyebrows in confusion. What is it? I lightly bit my lip. Did I want to tell him what was on my mind? Of course! We're gonna marry this guy, why are we already gonna hide stuff from him? I had to verbalize my curiosity. Damon took in the question before turning the, to the hall once again, frowning a bit. I think it's a really bad situation. You're trapped here, and I'm human, so I can't do much to help in the war. As Damien squeezed my hand, however, I felt my heart flutter a bit. Still, I want to help and bring you back. I'll do everything I can to send us back home. Oh, Damien... I naturally hugged his arm to me, causing him to gasp a bit and look over, a faint blush running across his cheek. He was so adorable and I absolutely loved him. Whatever drew him to me made my heart feel absolutely lucky to have him. As we reached our room, I took it in that the ambassador room I had claimed the night before was officially sanctioned for me and Damien. The others were given rooms in another part of the castle, so we had some space to ourselves. Stopping in, I took a seat on the bed, feeling mild exhaustion sweep over me. However, Damien looked around the room in slight awe. I tilted my head, wondering why. Damien stepped around the room, looking around and observing every piece of decor. As he got to the mantle, he looked almost stunned to see the design and architecture of it. It was almost like watching a little kid walk into a museum. Damien? My voice caught his attention, causing Damien to jump up and look at me in surprise. As he calmed down, he rubbed the back of his neck in nervousness. Sorry, um, I've never really been in a room like this before, so this is a bit of a surprise to me. Oh, it seems like his voice is so shaky. It's kind of adorable. <laughs> really? What kind of room did you have? I stared at Damien in shock. He really never saw a room like this. We were in the demon world, though. How could it... How, how, what? how could the, have this been not familiar to him? I was positive that he would have at least seen a room like this in his time here. Damien shook his head in reply. I never had a room growing up. What? 
I figured. I kind of figured. I kind of figured he had, like, a very shady kind of room. Like, it's just stone. Everything's just stone. That's that's my view of it. But that's where we're going to end today's episode. It's kind of depressing. He never had a room when he was growing up. But I'm quite glad Damien's back. So now all of his, his lovely voice will send shivers and goosebumps. And I will have all these feels again. I dropped my water cap. Great. But thank you guys for watching. Stay beautiful. And I'll catch you guys in the next episode.